we're making the corrections, but you want to pop out. Like if I pop you, if you're here, 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 and popped out here, and I pull all this in and get it all straightened out, it doesn't mean you're going to stay there because your body is going to resist that because it's feeling stuff it doesn't want to feel. It's forcing you to feel emotions and things inside you that are saying, no, I don't stand that way or move that way for a reason because I feel things I don't want to feel. But when those feelings start to change, when the story inside your head as to why you don't want to feel those things start to release, then you'll naturally start dropping other people more. You'll just naturally start connecting. Now, there's a different way we look at doing exercises um, at Fearless than I would say other coaches that are doing dating. We don't see going out and approaching girls as a way to meeting girls. I mean, it works. You can do it that way. But in honest reality, um, you guys ever meet a natural? A guy who's just naturally good with women? Does he walk around and say, if you asked him how many girls he approached today, what would he say? Are you crazy? He said, what do you mean? Yeah, you just ask him, well, how'd you meet this girl? And we just kind of bumped into each other. It's kind of part of their day to day, right? And as you get better and better at communication, you start just meeting people. You become a natural at meeting people, connecting with people, flowing with people. So you naturally meet girls just by who you're being. And but what approaching does is, is a one beautiful thing that um, nothing else really can duplicate. And it's great for everybody, married men, unmarried men. It's, you, you don't have to approach to hit on girls. You can just approach people like we did last night, everybody and anybody talking, saying hi, flowing with people. And it's really important because what it does is it eliminates insecurities. It helps you to work on how you feel about yourself. Nothing is going to show you how you feel about yourself more than walking up to strangers and saying hi. And I'm talking about everybody, not just beautiful women, beautiful women especially. The more when you walk up and they trigger you, bam, inside, that's your shit right in your face right there. Just like when we also put you on video, we do high def video and you see the way you look. How many of you have seen yourself on high def video and you look at it and you're like, dear God, I don't want to look at it anymore. That's how you feel about yourself inside. That's a reflection of your internal image. Okay. Who's looked at themselves on high def video and thought, damn, I look fucking good up there. You know, anybody? We got one hand. <laughs> good, get good, another one. Huh? That was the second time? Yeah. So sometimes it takes guys a long time to be able to have that feeling inside. Be able to make that internal shift to where they actually start to like watching themselves. Like, I look all right up there. I'm doing good. I had one client many years ago. He got up there and started watching himself. And I turned on the video and he took off his glasses. And he's like, I can't, I have to watch myself blurry for a while. I can't even stand to look at myself with my glasses on. And... Um, <laughs> And it took him a while. It took him a few days before he was willing to put on his glasses and look at himself. So it was, it was pretty trippy. So what was your name again? Vanessa. Vanessa. Everybody, this is Vanessa. Everybody say hi. hi. So, thank you. Awesome. She's a trooper. She's coming up here. It's her first day. So just keep that up. Those practices. I mean, I've literally gone out and spent a day. I think the record for me was uh, like 400 highs and stops in a day. You know, um, I, I would often, there was a period where I was doing like 80 a day, 60 a day, 50 a day, 100 a day on a regular basis. You know, um, you can do 100 highs in, in less than an hour, sometimes a half hour, boom, 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 just fly through the crowd, just saying hi to people. And stops would take a little longer. Um, if you're doing quick stops, I can fly through those pretty fast, quick questions, quick conversations. If you're doing long stops, that's different. Now I'm working on conversational length and communicating and connecting with people and having real connections. If I stop you and I, am I feeling my heart? Am I feeling my turn on? Am I feeling my grounding? Am I relaxed as I talk to you? And I'll, I'll look at one thing at a time. I might have 50 different things I want to work on. Can I feel my legs, which is my grounding? Hey, how you doing? And I'll just do that. I'll do five stops where I practice. Hey, how you doing? Feeling my legs. Hey, how you doing? And then I start working on the next thing, which is maybe feeling my heart or maybe feeling my turn on or maybe feeling my and I'll start working on eye contact. I, I can't tell you how many times I've asked you guys, you walk up and you'll talk to some people. I'll have you stop three, four, five people and I'll say, OK, can you tell me any of their eye color? No. Then did you really look at them? Go do it again. They'll come back. What's their eye color? I don't remember. And they'll do this repeatedly. I had one guy like five times in a row. What's the eye color? I still don't know. Why? Why would they, why would they not know? Nervous. Nervous. They get, every time they walk up, they go up in their heads so much 
from nervousness, they, everything that's happening with you disappears. And they can't give me a, a, a they can't, they don't have, even have a memory of it, of the interaction other than it's a blur. And so how good can that interaction actually be? It can't be very good, can it? So this is what we're talking about. The first step is not you getting good with women. The first step is you learning to relax in your own body and being able to have a natural flowing conversation with strangers, to actually be able to enjoy talking to her without the need to turn it into anything other than enjoy talking to her. That's the first step. When you can do that, then we can start to build on that. And that's what stops her about. That's why we stop anybody and everybody. Because if you just walk around looking for your perfect girlfriend, you're not gonna get much practice in really connecting with people. You need a lot in the beginning to get comfortable just relaxing with people, enjoying people, transmitting emotion with people, listening, feeling people, and starting to understand how all these dynamics go on, okay? If you're looking for the uh, anxiety to go away right away, it's probably not gonna happen. Anxiety is built up in your body over time. We tend to store it in the jaw and the neck. We pull up this way. We try to pull out of our bodies. It takes a period of time for that energy to come back down in awareness. <coughs> so again, if you're bodybuilding and you're, do you want muscles overnight? Yeah, a lot of you do, but are you gonna get muscles overnight? No. Have you met anybody that gets muscles overnight? No. That still is not overnight. Still takes time, doesn't it? How long is how long even with steroids that you have to work out and you have to exercise, you have to train. And then there's the downside of, of doing it fast is what? You get hurt. Yeah, you get hurt, things you know. You do it consistently, you do it properly, everything changes. Awesome. Let's take a look at our list. First thing we talked about was embodiment tension. So uh, we talked a lot about this last night in the VIP session. Everybody enjoy the VIP session last night? That was awesome. It was really good. We talked a lot about flirting. Uh, but these two here, I'm going to use, um, there's another term I use for both of them. We're going to talk about tension and uh, connection uh, or tension and vulnerability. But I'm going to call them something a little different. So we got tension and vulnerability, right? Both of them are really tension and both of them are vulnerability in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, so we got, uh, as Glover likes to say, and I say this a lot too, so it's interesting we both use the same, um, uh, same terms. Emotional tension, physical tension. Okay, which is the masculine, which is the feminine? Okay, yeah, the masculine is the physical tension, the emotional tension is the feminine. Why is that the case? Because we're more physical by nature. Yeah, who goes out in primitive times, let's go back a thousand years, who's going to go out and conquer the world? The masculine. Maskin's gonna go out and hunt. He's gonna battle, he's gonna protect, he's gonna fight, he's gonna provide food, he's gonna provide shelter. In a, in a wild jungle, and you got a primitive tribe, who's gonna wall, create a safe space for that tribe to exist? The masculine, okay? Who's gonna fill the inside of that safe space up? The feminine. The feminine, some land is emotional tension. Can anybody see an insecurity in your body faster than a woman? especially a feminine woman, she'll see your shit so fast and put it in front of you, right? Is that not true? When a guy's, when a guy's insecure, how fast do you feel it? Yeah, right away. Yeah. When he's nervous, he's anxious, boom, she, she picks up on it. And if that's her man, how does that feel? Like you see your man getting nervous and insecure and then running from it, like not wanting to look at it, how does that feel to you? Yeah. Now, if he's willing to look at it, and that's sexier, right? If he's willing to, like, I'm scared, but I'm going to face it. Okay, that's sexy. Okay, good. So first time here, so we just want to check, see what she thinks. But be honest, be really honest. Okay, okay. So that's, that's her job as the woman. You create this nice safe space and then she's gonna make sure that you're showing up in it. You get it? That's, she helps you to grow. She, she if, if, if she believes in you, she'll be your biggest hero. And if you're falling down and not showing up, she can be, she'll be on your ass, right? Why? 
Because what would happen in front of times if she doesn't? If you don't show up, what happens to her? What happens to her babies? Dead. Dead. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that still doesn't somewhat apply, at least uh, instinctually today, even though we don't live in the same world. That same feeling, that need for confidence, that need for a man that can handle physical tension is still there. Do you guys get what I'm talking about? And a lot of men today are developing the, uh, a strong capacity for their uh, for emotional tension, and they're not developing their physical tension. Modern society has taught men, is teaching men right now to develop this, which is not a bad thing. And it's teaching women to develop this. Okay, how many women do you run out, that you run into that are more, have better skills of physical tension than men today? Okay, how many women can go out and handle it all? You know, they have de highly developed masculines. Let's take the, um, a hardcore feminist like the really hardcore ball busting feminist. Is she more masculine than most masculine men? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take your average nice guy. How good is his uh, emotional development? He can relate and listen and he can be there and he'll be her best friend. He'll talk to her and sit with her and, ch and chat and, and she'll tell him all her problems. Why? Because he's one of the girls. <laughs> right? She's not going to date him. Okay. Now there's a reason for this. This is a very important thing. And it's not a bad thing, by the way. It's actually a good thing. We look at it as a bad thing. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is not a bad thing. Um, who's heard of the three, uh, David Data's three stages of development? Um, first stage, second stage, third stage is what he calls it. Simple. Okay, good. Only one person. Not many people hear about that. One, two, three. Okay. Um, in the first stage, and this is what I want to allude to for you guys to understand that this is what you're growing into. So this, this reversal of the ma male and female and masculine and feminine are two different things, guys. You guys understand that? They're two different things completely. Um, so you can have a woman that's predominantly masculine. You can have a man that's predominantly feminine. Uh, the problem is that most of the men and women and 80%, 90% of men are going to be, their bodies are built for masculine. 80, 90% of women, their bodies are built for feminine. Okay. That's just the way nature created us. But that doesn't mean that she can't be really good at masculine and you can't be really good at feminine. The problem is that most men today are good at emotional tension, not because they chose it, but in a reactive way. They, they got programmed by society to be that way, not by choice, okay? And most women that are good at physical tension, again, are being programmed. You need to be, you need to go out and conquer the world. You need to be a powerful woman. You need to make this happen. And they get forced into that role, okay? And doesn't mean, and it's a good thing in a, in a weird sort of way, but it's, but it's being developed in a reactive way, not in a proactive way. It's a reaction to, to the way society is being built. Now, when you run into a truly feminine man who owns it, he's not reactive to his femininity. Who would that be? Give me some, huh? A gay guy? A potentially a gay guy. You can run into some gay guys that own their feminine like motherfuckers, right? <laughs> they're like, they, they flamboyant and they're out there and they're in your face and they're confident, right? And that's very different than your average nice guy, isn't it? Okay. Do you know any guys like that? Yeah. A few. <laughs> um, and the same thing, when you run into a truly masculine woman who owns it, who would that be? Who? No, give me a real person. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, yeah. That chick from the World Cup. Who? The best female soccer player in the world. Who's that? She's beats all the records. She has all the. I'll have to look her up. More than men, actually. Yeah, I'll check her out um, if you know her name. We'll find it out. There's um, who was I just watching the other day? She was in um, who's that? Who's that ex MMA fighter that's in The Mandalorian? Gina, not Gina Carano. Gina Carano, is that it? Yeah, she's super masculine, but super, and she's tough, right? And uh, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with her. She kicked my ass. <laughs> she's a, she's a tough woman. Um, she owns her masculine really well. Okay. And so there's nothing wrong with that. These are beautiful things. Now, in the first stage, uh, first stage man, it's all about, it's my way or the highway. Get the fuck out. I'm the masculine. I am 
the first stage man is really identified with physical tension. He's like, I'm going to get the shit done. This king of the castle. Um, he could be a guy that's uh, uh, a really good guy that loves his girl, right? But he thinks that I'm going to love you by taking control. I'm going to take charge. We're going to build a house. You're going to be my wife. We're going to do it this way. That's the old school model of I'm, I'm in charge. I'm the man, right? It's, it's kind of dogmatic. Okay. And uh, it could also be a, an asshole. He could be a gangster. He could be um, a member of a gang and he's like, you know, get the fuck out. I'm going to kick your ass. You know, that kind of attitude. But it's a sense of control and power. Does this make sense? Through what? Through physical force. That's first stage. Or physical control of the environment. I'm going to make everything perfect so you feel safe and you feel loved. I'm going to have the perfect house, the perfect everything. You're going to be taken care of. That's another type of a first stage guy. Okay. Uh, first stage woman is what? Anybody know? Submissive. Huh? Submissive. Uh, you could say submissive, but what is the power? Because when we're talking about first stage, how does, how does a first stage woman have power? Because if the first stage man has power, first stage woman has power. Using her sexuality to kind of get what she wants. W women are very good at emotions, right? That's their, their power. Their superpower is seeing the subtlest emotion shift inside of you. They look inside of you. I remember I dated this girl and she would ask me sometimes, she was a coach herself and she was a really successful coach. She could read people really well. And sometimes she would ask me like a question or say something to me that had a lot of emotional intention and she'd just stare at me. I'd see her and, she'd, and I'm like, you're reading me now, aren't you? And she said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I doing that again? And she, and she was just like studying every little nuance, the littlest, like the dilation of my pupils, the way I move, the way I, she was trying to get to the truth, right? Because that's what they pick up on is what, what your subcommunication at a deep level. So their superpower is the ability to really see subtle emotions and how they work. And there also is their ability to play with those emotions, to push a little here, push a little there, to pull back a little here, to pull back a little there to get what they want. Yeah, well, they're much better at manipulation than we are. If they're highly identified with their feminine, yeah. You know, that they can get guys falling around. Like a first stage woman that really loves her partner, what, what would she be like? She's gonna back lead him and do certain things to get him to think he had his own idea potentially, but she's gonna give him exactly what she's decided he needs to, be, to, to have the perfect household. This is what he, he needs here, this is what he needs there, and she's gonna be at work making that happen. Um, at a deeper level, or at a, 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 at a more selfish level, because that means she, she still loves you. She's gonna try to, but she's decided what you need. First stage, man has decided what, you, what, you, what she needs, and at a first stage woman has decided what you need. And I'm gonna help you to get it. That, that, they care, but it's still a selfish in a sense. Do you see what I mean? And she, they're gonna use their, their skills to make that happen. Um, and, and so on a, on a deeper level, we talked about like, let's say a, a loving housewife that's gonna make sure that everything's taken care of and she's gonna use her subtle communication to manipulate the situation. She might even withhold sex to get him to do things she wants. She might do little things like this. Uh, you know, say certain things just at the right time, poke at him just right here to kind of nudge him this way, trigger a little emotion there. Do women ever do that? Mm -hmm. A little bit here and there? Yeah. Depends. Depends, yes. yeah. And what does it depend on? I mean, the situation. Yeah. Um, I know I've done it in the past. Yeah, but every situation you're reading differently. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because you, you're playing, you're looking at everything, the whole big picture, and then you're deciding what to do and how you want to handle it. Yeah. Not in a bad way, always, but. No, no, it could be. It could. The intent can be completely loving, exactly. and 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 this is we're talking only about a first stage right now. So there's second stage and third stage. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So the intent can be completely loving. Now on a manipulative level, how much power does a first stage woman have? Like we talked about the gangster, the bad boy. He's going to use force to get stuff done. Hey, what's up, man? And I'm going to dominate, right? I'm going to do stuff and, and push people around. What would a first stage version of that in a woman be like? Potentially. What's somebody in real life that's, that's, that's currently right now probably doing stuff like that in this town? Huh? Your ex-wife, okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, what about, what about a, um, an escort? What about a stripper? What about a gold digger? And, and actually, in, in reality, somebody could actually do those careers potentially from, like, I really want to help men and through this business. But a lot of them are just doing it for the money to manipulate and get, right? And so, um, but we could take a, um, a gold digger who just marries men to steal their money or dates men to get money out of them. You know, how, how much, have you guys ever run into women like that? Yeah. Huh? It's your Miami? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, a, that's an example of that, okay? Black Widow. I'm going to marry guys, take all their money, and kill them and leave them, you know, or something like that. What, what about a woman that just has an emotional void in herself that she needs to feel or fulfill and so she applies these measures you know, to get you because she, she thinks that you're going to help her feel better about herself? Well, that would be first stage. That would be a perfect example. I, I just want guys to validate me all day long. And, and buy me gifts, take care of me, follow me around, because then I feel good about myself. When I have no guys around me following around, I don't feel good about myself. So I need, I need constant attention. Do you, do you ever meet women like that? Yeah, they're out there. There's guys like that too. So I have a friend and his wife, like we, we my business partner and I, we always talk about this because she's constantly posting pictures of herself in, in ways that are, like if that was my wife, I'd have a huge problem with it. Uh huh. And we question, well, is she? I mean, and if you look at all the likes on Facebook, it's like constant dudes just liking all these photos. Yeah, a lot of women do that. But but the question is, is like a woman in that situation, is is she more likely to be cheating on him or be in an open relationship? Not necessarily. She could be totally like into him. It's just that she needs that validation. Yeah, every every case is different. Everybody is different. Uh, you got to remember, the feminine loves to be seen. And the, 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 the beauty needs a witness, right? And the feminine is beauty. We're not beauty. The masculine's not beauty. The masculine's a picture frame. The feminine is the, is the picture. The feminine loves to be seen because that's, the, that's the, ex, the, the expression of the feminine wants to be witnessed because that's, that's the whole purpose of feminine is beauty, right? Does this make sense? It's reflection of light. If you look at a, a flower, which part of it's masculine, which part of it's feminine? <laughs> right. So there's different, now you can, you, can, you can play with this in different ways. The feminine can be an elegant, beautiful, subtle, demure. It can be wild, it can be super sexy. It's all different forms of being seen. There can be really skewed versions of it, okay? Then you got men that are competing with women to be prettier than women today. A lot of, that's very common, right? Um, they're trying to be, you know, like the Brad Pitts of the world that, that uh, when he was young, he was, he was considered very beautiful and um, they had a lot of feminine energy in that sense. Um, but I would, I would say that would be an individual case by case basis. You'd have to look at what, what, why is she doing it and what's going on and, and is he encouraging it? Is he not encouraging it? Some guys like that, like put it out there, baby. Let's see how many likes you get. Fucking hot. Now, now I want to fuck you. Say all these guys want you, I'm going to go fuck you. Now, some guys get off on stuff like that. You see what I mean? So you, everybody's different with that situation. And, uh, and it's, it's, so don't be surprised. There's, there's guys out there that get really turned on by that stuff and encourage it. So you gotta really take it from what do I want? Not what does my friend want and what does his wife want? So it's an individual thing. So in other words, I could be okay with that or not okay with that. Right. Without yeah, without knowing them, I couldn't say anything. The action doesn't indicate what's going on in ter as much as what's, it does to a degree. Like if we looked at it, we could see a lot of stuff in the energy and the way, in the subcommunication. But without looking at it and, and kind of exploring it, we don't know for sure. I don't want to jump to conclusions, anything like that. So let's talk about how second stage got started. Second stage is kind of where the bulk of the planet is right now. No More Mr. Nice Guy is really a second stage man. If we look at the early 1900s, that's when feminism pretty much started. That's when the women had started to say what? I want the right to vote. I want the right to own property. And that was all good stuff. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. And I think they should have all those rights, right? And then, they, I, and then but then they started to say stuff like, uh, I can take care of myself. I don't need you anymore. I don't need a man. I can do it all myself. And then eventually throughout generations that got stronger and that voice got louder and louder. And then men started to do what? If men are being told over and over again, 
I don't need your mask and I don't need you to support me. I don't need you to take care of me. I don't need you to be there. I do it all myself. And there's this sense of, why are you trying to do this? You're trying to control me. What do men start to do in response to that energy? Just stop showing up. Take over the bed, but no. Yeah, they start to feel the sense of, well, I don't know what else to do. I'm lost. So they start to explore their emotions. They start to learn about themselves. They start to remember the hippies in the night late 60s. Man, I'm just gonna flow. Let's kick back, smoke a joint. Let's relax. Let's. Well, what's up, man? I don't. There's this sen- no more sense of like. There's this throwing out this sense of responsibility and getting shit done. And I'm just gonna be in the moment. And there's that sense that they're starting to move from this side to this side in response. Now, today, what we've got is a bunch of half masculine, half feminine people, men and women. So we got these movements today, like who's seen these movements today where you got these people running around going, why do we even have to have gender at all? Why can't everybody just be whatever they wanna be? If you wanna be a woman, you be a woman. You wanna be a man, you be a man. You wanna be, and, but in reality, we're all the same gender. And then you got these people out there saying that, that uh, gender, um, that the way we act as a gender is conditioned by society and is not biological. There's no hormonal, hormonal response to that anymore. It's all part of this being half masculine, half feminine kind of thing. So if you got some, a man and a woman that come together that are half masculine, half feminine, what's gonna happen in that relationship? Polarity. No polarity, it's gonna die very fast. If there was polarity in the beginning, which there probably was a little bit of polarity, maybe he played the role of the masculine in the beginning, but then after a few dates, it starts to die, or after a few months, he starts to, you know, what do you want? Let me take it. Like, tell me who to be. Where do you want to go to dinner? And he stops. He's masculine. Stops showing up. And she starts having to take more charge. So he starts out here because he's following the dating rules. But then he goes here after he gets to know her. And then she has to go here because he won't fucking show up. You ever had this happen? And what's it feel like? Oh, no, I didn't like it. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? And then you have to you have to take over this role. And then what, what, what happens to the relationship? Polarity, sexual attraction dies. Why? Because you're not showing up as the masculine anymore, which doesn't allow her to be, uh, forces her out of her feminine. She doesn't feel as, as beautiful anymore because she's got to take charge all the time. Okay, she doesn't get to be the expression of the feminine for you and dance for you and flow for you and all that kind of stuff or vice versa. If she's a woman that's been programmed to be physical, and the physical, like I'm supposed to be a woman, I'm supposed to be power, I'm supposed to be strong. And she keeps emasculating the masculine to the point where he like finally gives up and goes over here, polarity dies. With no polarity, there's no sexual attraction. Eventually, you're just best friends at best hanging out. Sometimes you end up hating each other and resenting each other. Anybody have this, this happen in their lives? Raise your hand. Okay, cool. <laughs> it sucks, doesn't it? And it's, it's a product of modern society because, there, because we don't have these polarities anymore uh, established. We don't understand what they are. Now you can start to consciously see them at play. You start to pay attention to these polarities. You start to consciously dance in these polarities. You keep reestablishing the polarities all the time. And you do it throughout a lifetime. Have you ever seen an old couple that's been married now 50 years, 60 years, and they're still fucking happy. And they're still giggling and laughing and playing together. Why? I got some videos of these guys. I got some uh, interviews with people like this. They're fascinating. One guy was talking about, oh yeah, I was like, I think he was like 14 or 15 when he met his wife. And he would walk all these miles to go see her every day. And now they're like 80 years old and they're sitting there holding hands and he's giggling, he's teasing her, she's laughing. They're still perfectly happy today. I had an article in People Magazine of a couple that had been married, I think it was 81 years. He was 101 and she was 100. Did they come up through this? Huh? The article came up through this? No, this was a long time ago. Oh, like many years. I lost it actually. Um, They had 14 kids and those kids had kids and kids. They had a huge family. They were being taken care of by I think some grandkids or somebody that were there in their 60s, whoever was taking care of them. And their kids, grandkids, whatever they were, were saying stuff like, they're still super happy together today. He holds her hand every day. He walks her around because she's blind now. They giggle together. They laugh. They've never not been happy together. What do they have? A good sense of polarity. 
They understand their, their, their roles and they understand how to play in their roles and dance in their roles together. They keep that alive. And then this doesn't mean that if you're really sick and can't show up, she can't jump into her masculine. She can. And then she can jump back, okay? And vice versa. This is, so this is, um, so in the second stage, everybody's half masculine, half feminine. Everybody's neutered. It's not sexy anymore. How many people are walking around like that today? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how many men don't have initiate, we were talking about this yesterday, are not initiated into their masculine energy. And so they're afraid of their own death. They're, I mean, you gotta get, you, you, they're afraid of getting hurt. They're afraid of everything. They, they have so much fear in their bodies. It's ridiculous. How are they supposed to stand up to a woman? They can barely stand up for themselves because they're scared of the world. They're not warriors. And I'm not talking about warrior in the sense of going out and fighting. I'm talking about warrior in the sense of going out and, and fucking the world open. So if, whether you're doing a business or something else. Do you understand what I mean, guys? Okay. So in the third stage, this is where it gets interesting. This is what we at Fearless have always been trying to develop for you guys. Is, is we're, we're working on this developing more third stage men and women. And in the third stage now, the men start working on consciously developing understanding of their masculine and how to develop it in their bodies. What does it feel like moving in their masculine, walking in their masculine, talking, starting to, but they, but they still have their emotional or feminine development. You don't give it up. You don't walk out of it. Because what's beautiful, if a woman, let's say she's re-identified with her feminine self, and the masculine is re-identified with its physical self, but they both can do both sides, why is that a beautiful thing? Well, balance is, but what we want to do is create a polarity, right? So I got a left and a right hand. Which hand do I prefer to use? If I'm a masculine person, I'm going to prefer to use the hand that's masculine. Does this make sense? And so if I'm a feminine person, I'm going to want to use the hand that's feminine primarily. That doesn't mean I can't switch to the other one. And if I can relate to her, like she's in her feminine and I have a lot of feminine development, whether I'm in my masculine or not, I can relate to her feminine better. I can understand her feminine. I can appreciate it. I can respect it. I can adjust and flow with it because I have my own feminine development. And just like she can relate to your masculine, respect and appreciate your masculine. And so now a man that's in his third stage can feel into her so deep, he almost knows what she needs before she does. Because he's also, also can feel into her with his feminine and he can feel her emotions happening. He can relate to him, he can adjust, he can flow a little bit, but he's still got this nice masculine container. So he's still a masculine guy and vice versa. She can feel into a man and she can use her feminine to nurture, inspire, heal because she knows where he's at as a man in that moment. And she can help guide him more into his masculine. And instead of either one of us doing what we want to do because we want to get a goal, like in the first stage, it's what I want, right? It's what I want, I want, I want. And so neither of us are, no, are, are now trying to get what I want from each other. It's about uh, something much greater. It's like, it's not what I want, it's not what she wants, it's what the moment needs to be the best possible. And that's where the masculine leads from. When she inspires, it's not about what's necessarily what she wants or what you want, it's what she, she wants to inspire you to be the best possible, even if you're afraid of it. Does this make sense? In the third stage, that's where we're headed. That's the con conscious redevelopment of these energies. Okay. Um, and that's what I want to move you guys to. I want you guys to understand. In the first stage, if I walk up and say, hi, I can be, uh, somebody did this yesterday. You did a little bit of it yesterday. There's a, there can be a very dominating energy, right? Are you okay? You feeling better? Feeling a little sick? Okay. <laughs> okay. It happened. So in the first stage, uh, you can have a very dominating masculine energy, right? It's like, hi, you know, there's a sense of pushing and, and, and force and power, you know, what's up? How you doing? You know, there's this attitude, this cockiness, right? Um, and 
in the second stage and i want to contrast with the second stage is that's where you start to get i can feel every i can feel all her emotions and her emotions now and they're scary and i don't know i don't want to get hurt by her emotions and you don't have much grounding your masculine's kind of weak because you've never developed it in your life so now because when you don't have a grounding cord what happens in electronics Shorts. You get shorts. So now I've got shorts, nervous ticks and shorts because I, I can't ground the energy out of my body. And she is energy. She's this big ball of energy. That's what the feminine is, right? This big ball of emotion and feeling. We're constantly trying to get rid of emotion. They're expressing emotion. So now I get this big charge of energy from her coming at me and I don't have good grounding. What happens? Here I come over and I'm like, oh God, it's coming at me. I want to say hi. I like her. I like girls. But, uh, but, you know, they're so emotional and I can't handle all their emotions. And it's like, hi, um, I don't mean to bother you, but my, my name is Brian. I just want to say hi. And how many, how often do you guys do that? Yeah. How does it feel? Huh? Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> how does it feel when they do that though? I don't like it. She doesn't like it. No. Do you guys get what I'm talking about? Okay. And that, that's, that is not sexy because why? Because if we go back to that, like even the first stage guy can be sexy, the third stage guy can be sexy, the second stage guy, not so sexy. Because second stage guy is afraid of tension. He's afraid of the thing that makes him a man. He's afraid of it. He's, he's afraid to use, use, he's afraid of emotion. If you had grounding, then from your grounding, which is masculine, you can handle her emotions. You, you can channel and ground her emotions, which makes her feel calm and safe and protected. You've turned off the very mechanism that she needs from you. The one gift you can give her that makes her feel awesome. You're grounding, you're containing, you're creating this nice safe space. You've turned all that off. Okay. And for her, the very gift she can give you, if she's in her second stage, she's turned off too. You're no longer her hero. In the second stage, you know, We'll go on date night every Friday. We'll get a minivan. There's, there's all compromise. And you take care of this. I'll take care of this. And, and there's no sense of like, wow, there's some like believing in you and being and, and her inspiring you. And you're my hero. And if a woman that you really cared about, that was nice and feminine, told you, wow, you, you, I believe in you. You're my hero. How, what would that cause you to do? Anything and everything. Huh? Anything and everything. Anything and everything. Because that's what men want more than anything. Uh, Mark talks about that, right? M men really need a woman to believe in us. And that's what brings us a life. When a feminine woman that we really like says that something like that to us, it wakes us up inside. And we want to go slay the world, slay dragons, protect her. Do you see what I mean? That's why women can manipulate us so well, too. Because we really do have that part of us that wants to take care of them and protect them. And, and a woman that gets that can then act like you're her hero because we ain't getting it uh, everywhere. Like today, we're so bad at getting it, especially second stage guys are so bad at getting this from women because we're in the second stage. There's not a lot of women that are responding to us like they should. <coughs> and then that woman can come along and play the role of a woman that sees that. And then she can start to wrap you around her finger. Who's had that happen to them before? Only two hands. Come on, guys. The whole, I'm sure the whole room has had that happen at some point. Okay. So this, that, again, we go back to that polarity. When you start to learn to ground and contain and lead again, that ability for her to manipulate you, manipulate you, that ability for her to be able to manipulate you starts to go away. It's not as easy for her. Okay. Because now you can start to see her subtle communication and what she's intending, which is really good. And, she, and she'll like it. Because in reality, for her to really, really fall in love with a guy and believe in a guy and trust a guy, she can't be easily able to manipulate and control him. He needs to be able to set boundaries with her and say no. To truly understand this, you gotta understand that this happens at a very subtle level. It doesn't happen at an obvious level. You know, as I explain the concepts, this is conceptual. As I explain the concepts, if I was to walk up and I go back here and I'm like, hi, my name is Brian. What's your name? Where are you from? What, what stage am I in right now? Actually, I was two. I was in two. Why was I in two? Yeah. Did you feel the little push on me too? 
little bit. I left my masculine a bit, went just a little bit into the front of my body and started to beg for a little validation, just a little bit. I, did, I didn't want to do it a lot. I wanted to see who could pick it up. But so that, you go there and sort of back I first pulled back and then when I went up, I went to the front of my body right here and I was like, hi, how you doing? My name's Brian, what's yours? And there's a sense of wanting something. Do you feel it? Okay. And then the other way is like, hi, uh, my name's Brian, what, what's your name? Do you feel the pullback? And the, I'm actually pulling to the left. Um, it's all subtle, very subtle stuff. You know, I like you, you're really interesting, where are you from? Do you feel the, the pleading for validation in that? No. It's not sexy, okay? Girls love a guy that's forward and direct, confident and powerful. How many of you guys think girls don't like compliments? Like when you walk up to them on the street and just met them, like give them a nice compliment, it's not gonna work. Okay, that's, that's actually, uh, uh, because a lot of guys will say that, don't give girls compliments, man, they, they just don't. It's because they don't know how to be grounded, masculine and solid when they give the compliment. If the guy is really grounded, masculine, <coughs> solid, present, penetrating, and he's right here and he's giving a compliment, then it feels like he doesn't need me. He's giving the compliment because he wants to give it to me, not because he needs validation from me. But if you come up and you give her a compliment because you're trying to get something from her validation, that's not sexy. That's a turn off. Do you see, it's still the same compliment. One is more sexy, one is not sexy because of who you're being. So it all comes down to the point I'm trying to make, and this is why third stage is so, so powerful, is, uh, is it comes down to who you're being. Who you're being in the moment is everything before you open your mouth, how you feel in your body, how much you own your turn on and your groundedness and your heart and your, and your ability to, and can I be a man? Do you have a quick question? Yeah, so where do you operate from? From the belly, or from the heart? All of it. All of it, here. I'll give you a quick demo. Um, if I'm open my... Hi, my name's Brian, what's your name? Where are you from? Esteban. Where am I operating from? Uh, okay. If I drop down just a little. Hi, I'm Brian, where are you from? Yeah, a little more heart. Okay, I dropped down a little lower. How you doing, man? My name's Brian, what's your, what's your name? Yeah, okay. And then I drop down a little more. How you doing? the whole thing yeah i'm dropping down even lower do you see as you come down the body it changes the way i'm perceived doesn't it but the last one felt like everything was yeah active. yeah you can't if i just get the turn on on and no heart that can be lecherous or scary that can be urgh. so you got to have and people can do that i've seen people do it so the lower you are in your body the more attractive oh yeah and also the better you are at athletics the better you are at dealing with tension the better you are at dealing with life it goes way beyond with women so so if you if you want to have attraction with women, you feel the legs. When do you feel your heart? Say that. Feel the legs. You said. Yeah. When you, you would well, legs is grounding. Heart. It'll make them feel safe. <coughs> then you got heart. You got turn on. You got all these different parts of your body that you need to embody. Because you see, I can disembody my turn on and just have grounding and make her feel really safe. That doesn't mean necessarily means she'll feel sexy, but she'll feel comfortable with me and protected by me. That might be a dad to a daughter. You see what I mean? Okay, cool. But if I add turn on to it and the grounding, now we're moving a little more in the direction you're, I think you're talking about. And then we add turn on heart and grounding, it's even better. Because you spread that energy out. And you can turn one up, one down. It's like a musical instrument. These are my notes. And I can turn up, turn on. I can turn up heart. I can turn on, depending on what we're doing that day and where we're at. Okay, cool. And I'm, I want to do a, co a couple demos before we close out, so. I watched a, a recent YouTube video that you had talking about um, doing here and then also your turn on. So it was fresh on my mind and when I was around my girlfriend, I implemented that. <clears throat> Primarily I implemented the turn on the majority of the night. But then when we made love, I switched a bit. I went to the, to the gut. And what I found was I wasn't able to get turned on personally as much. Yeah. Well, you're not in your turn so on. Yeah. I switched it back to the going lower and using that turn on, and I was able to yeah. be much more aroused. So I think. Yeah, we have conscious control over our level of embodiment, and we just don't realize it. Uh, sometimes you got to learn if you're disembodied in your head. There's a reason for that. You've, you've left your body. Analytical guys are typically have left their body. But the more you get back into your body, the sexier you become. This includes your back. 
Uh, do you guys want me to do demos or answer questions? I got five minutes. Demos. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Did you want to work? Because you're, I was going to have you work, but you're. To, well, she's never seen anybody work. Oh, okay. So that's why I want to make sure you're okay. Okay, let's do a couple of them and then you can do one too. Okay, uh, who, who wants to work right now? Okay, cool. Uh, first hand I saw was in the back back there. So come on up. Are you good with being on video? Can you okay. see from there? Can you see well from there? Do you need to move or anything? You're... Maybe over here. Yeah, stand right over here a little bit. Okay, uh, scoop this way just a hair. This this way, and then step back. Back, 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 back. Okay, guys, remember, women are not thinking logically. He's standing like this. He's walking like this. What they're doing is they're feeling. Does it make me uncomfortable? Does it make me comfortable? Do I feel lighter? Do I feel heavier? This is what's going on in there. They're, they're paying attention to the feeling in their body. So do the same, okay? You're just going to walk up to her, make eye contact and say hi and shake her hand like you're like you, you like you want to meet her and you're being genuine and real okay yeah. and that's it all right cool okay go go for it hey how's it going mm. hey i'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost running well, from let, you. let's let, yeah let them answer first really quick and then oh, guys sorry. what did you see it's very back. yeah first stage memory first stage what no second stage second stage rushing yeah and you literally, you pulled to the left and back, like she said, yeah. and he was 100% right. Did you feel that happen? Yeah, yeah. You're a very sensitive guy, though. He has a big heart, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. I can see that. So everything I'm talking about, he has this sensitive heart, a lot of emotional development, but what he's missing is this, his grounding, his legs, his, his, uh, his ability to own his turn on. He's scared of her because he can't ground himself. It's not that he's literally scared of her. It's just a machine. The body's a machine. The idea of scared implies all these bad messages. What's happening is the body can't ground himself, so he's trying to pull out of the tension. See how he's looking completely towards me? He's headed like this. Step in. Can't even Step see in. me. And now look at her, okay? And um, just stare at her for a second. Look at her left eye, which is on this side, okay? And now ask your heart. And I want you to ask, guys, this is like what we'll be in a movie theater. You're sitting in the comfortable movie seat and you just watch the movie. Think of your body as a movie. It's not, it's not, you don't have control of it. Ask your heart to open and don't try to do anything. Just ask it to open right there. There you go. I'm going to lower your head into the tension a little bit more. Notice this line of tension right here. And then ask your heart to open a little more in that line of tension. There we go. Now, he pops here really bad. He pushes forward. Can you feel how he pushes forward right here? I'm going to pull that just a hair in, and I want you to find your spine right there a little more. Right there. Find your spine. Good. Good, good. That's much better. Now feel your stomach and ask your stomach to open. Good. Do you feel the difference in them already, guys? Yeah. Good. Now look, keep that penetrating energy and penetrate in a little more push. That's it. You're starting to get turned on. Um, right? Am I right? Yeah. Now say hi. Hey, how's it going? It's better. Now, we want to work on the voice a bit. You have to be able to reach her with your voice. That was a good voice, but it doesn't reach her. So I want you to push the voice to her. Just not push it. That's the wrong word. I want you to allow the voice. Just like set the intention. Tell your body. I want the voice to speak into her. Hey. Hey. Now drop. Feel my hand and say hey. Hey. Okay. Now I'm going to have, I'm going to do an exercise. Open your mouth and just out loud go, ah, uh, uh. until you feel my stomach, my hand. Uh, Keep doing it. Don't stop. Find the hand. You'll find a tingle down here. Uh, uh, find, find a tingle right here. Uh, find out, relax all this. Keep going. Uh, Keep going until you find that. Stay with her. Uh, there you go. Find that. That's it. Come down. Uh, Take another breath. Ah. Uh, now do it yourself. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. He's really tight. He's really <laughs> tight in here. Yeah. He's really tight. So he's not allowing this to open up. And that's why he's not speaking from down here. Keep going. Ah. Uh, right here. So you can feel more hair. Do you feel that difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel a lot. That's what you're looking for here. Okay. Can do it again. Uh, there you go, say hi to her. Hey. I'm gonna do it one more time, take a breath, relax. Look into her, find the tension. 
pop this back in. Say hi. Hey. Good. Better? Mm -hmm. Now shake her hand and say hey. Hey. Okay. Yeah. It's better. He pulled back with the hand. Did you feel that? The hand yeah, wanted to go backwards. Like, okay, I'm okay, but my head can go back. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody would see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Now walk back. And I want you to, as much as you can, stay in that tension and walk forward. Feel that tension. Feel her. Hey. Okay, it's better. And we got to work on that hand now. You got a feminine. He leads with the feminine part of his hand, okay? So this is the feminine part. This is the masculine part. And what you did, I wanted to show you. Okay. I led with the feminine. Hey, okay. do you feel that yeah, happen? Yeah, I feel that. I, feel I that. want you to feel the outside. Feel the outside. Feel the outside and feel, feel the hey. difference. Okay. Don't, well, don't jam it in okay, there. Okay, I got you, I got you. This, <laughs> like support, feel this. Feel the big old shaker. Hey. That, oh, much better. better? Yes, yeah. better. Good. Now ask her a question. Stay in the tension. Feel the backs of your legs. Pop this back in. Right here. Find your spine. Right there. Now ask, say a question or, or a statement to her. Where are you from? Now I want you to speak from here. Where are you from? And he's still not. He's speaking from up here, guys. Yeah. That's why the question won't land. Okay. And so, say, uh, do the again and do it from the heart. Uh, Find your heart. Uh, uh, it's going to get vulnerable, sensitive. Uh, That's good. Now, do it from here. Uh, uh, Come down here. Keep going. Uh, good. Come here. Uh, good. Now, ask a question. How are you doing today? It's better. Oh, do you yes. feel the drop? Yes, yes. Yeah. So now say Mary had a little lamb from here. Mary had a little lamb. And say it into her. Look at me. Look at me. This is what you're doing. Mary had a little lamb. It's okay. Look into her and I'll watch the difference. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus in on you. I'm going to push on you a little bit. Mary had a little lamb. You feel the difference? That's what I want you to do to her. All right. Mary had a little lamb. Good. Kind of. It's, it's better though, right? Yeah, but better. But... Okay, good. We're not going to fix everything in five minutes. Now, uh, say one more thing. <coughs> say, I like you. I like you. Yeah, it's genuine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not potent, but genuine. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys getting the idea? It, these are, do you see how many 1% there are in subcommunication and embodiment? But this is really a lot of improvement. Yep, I mean, it's a lot. So good job. So give her, give her a thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, guys. Uh, you guys getting the idea? There's a lot of one percents that go in changing subcommunication. It's one here, one here. Now, what causes those one percents? We're making the corrections, but you want to pop out. Like if I pop you, if you're here, 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 and popped out here, and I pull all this in and get it all straightened out, it doesn't mean you're going to stay there because your body is going to resist that because it's feeling stuff it doesn't want to feel. It's forcing you to feel emotions and things inside you that are saying, no, I don't stand that way or move that way for a reason because I feel things I don't want to feel. But when those feelings start to change, when the story inside your head as to why you don't want to feel those things start to release, then you'll naturally start dropping other <coughs> people more. You'll naturally start connecting. It works the other way too. If, uh, if, if Dr. Glover comes up here and starts to have a conversation with you that causes you to shift the way you feel about yourself internally, like, you know what, you're right, I am kind of a sexy guy. Suddenly you walk up here and naturally you'll start doing more embodiment stuff and you won't even know you're doing it. You'll start making corrections because the embodiment follows what you picture, feel, and see inside your body and your head and your mind. How you feel about yourself has a direct reflection on how you walk, talk, stand, move, your voice, all that stuff. When I don't like myself, everything starts tightening up and I start pulling out of my body. When I like myself, I start relaxing back down to my body and I start enjoying it. And then she feels me enjoying my body. She feels me enjoying my turn on. When I don't have a problem with turn on, I can stand there and, hey, what's up? And I can start dropping into my crotch more and all that kind of stuff and owning it. And she's like, okay, this guy owns his sex. He's not afraid of his own cock. And there's a big difference in that, in the way people respond to you. You know, that's very different than the guy who's who's trying to push his cock on you. He's, there's a difference between owning your sexual energy yeah, I'm a sexual guy, I own it. And the guy who's, here's my sexual energy, I'm going to lead with it and see if I can force you to you see the difference. And there's a big difference between those two.